So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna play around today. Again, we, we talked about, you know, I, I made a big thing about, hey, you don't even need your own data, right? So here's what we're gonna do is that we're gonna kind of explore some of these databases out there that you can utilize for your own data that are free, which is key. So here I want in your browser, just put in, uh, I want you to put in, um, let's go TCGA and then portal. Hit return. Okay, it should say GDC data portal homepage. Everybody got that? All right, click on it. You're like, yeah, we did, man. You're way behind us. <laughs> So again, in Cancer Bioinformatics, this is a very, everybody references this site. Even though I've, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's very good. It got a lot better. I used to just not pay, do, pay attention to it all, but they've kind of reworked it a little bit. So it actually is not horrible. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do is, I realize your professor is gonna talk about TCGA and say, hey, go get some data there or find this. So I want you to be familiar with it, even though I don't necessarily believe full heartedly in the site. I'd also say that a lot of databases or other tools are built on this. So the data that's contained in here, which is publicly available, a lot of other software programs utilize, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. If you look here, this is the cases, all the cases they have. Um, basically, they have 44,637 cases of cancer in here, or at least cancer and maybe controls. Do you think you could ever generate that much data yourself? Heck no, right? So this is why people utilize this. I will also say, even though, I mean, there's a lot of cases, do you know how many people get cancer a year? Any ideas? How many? <laughs> yeah, two million. Two million people get cancer every year, about 600,000 die, right? This represents 44,000 of that, yeah. Is that just within the U.S. or is that... That's just the U.S. Yeah, worldwide it could be huge. But again, this is mostly focused on data generated in this country and, and 44,000 out of, you know, this has been around for 20 years, you know, 40 million different cases they could potentially get, and this is what we get, so whatever. Okay, so, and this kind of gives you a, this is the cases, so what I'd also wanna point you out is, to is, you know, sometimes you picking the cancer is a good thing, that, you know, if I was going to jump into like cancer research, you know, I was going to use this, maybe bone marrow and blood cancers might be a good thing to investigate. There's a lot of data there. Same with lung, right? Uh, not so much bile duct. So depending on the type of cancer will also depend on the amount of data that are available. Okay, so let's go to what I want you to do in this left-hand corner. I'm going to get this up a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I want you to go to Analysis Center. I don't need to, so I don't go over. Okay, so what we're gonna do up here, I've already got something set up. We're going to, what we're going to do is we are going to do the Cohort Builder, okay? So we're gonna build, Again, out of those 44,000 different cases, this gives us the ability to pick certain samples that we want to put into a data set that we can analyze. So what I'm going to do is, so hit Cohort Builder. And then me, I've, I've already got these things up here. I'm going to get rid of these. Let's start a new one, okay? So you shouldn't have, unless you've been playing around with this, you shouldn't have, it should say unsafe cohort, right? Okay. All right. So last class I thought it might be interesting. It's summertime, especially now it's getting really hot. The sun is really beaten down. Um, why don't we look at skin cancer? So, so here's what we're going to do. So anybody here work on skin cancer? 
All right, you're, you're set. Um, I'll get have another chance. I'll let you guys tell me a gene. It's kind of like a version of improv. Um, if you have a gene, anybody out there that's not working on skin cancer, you know, want me to look at, like, we'll, we'll analyze it in real time. So, all right, so here's what I want to do is I think we should go to, let's go to tissue or organ of origin. So you see this 189 here? Click on that. Okay, what I want you to do is go all the way down to skin. Oops. And there'll be several. What I want to do, and this gives you how many samples are in each one of those. I think the NOS is not, not specific, maybe. I don't know. I, can't, I, I try to look it up. I could find what it means. I think it's nonspecific. So this just means it comes from skin. So what I want you to do, there's 822 samples there. I want you to hit skin. Click that. And as you do that, you should see 122 cases in the far right. Does everybody see 122? Okay. What I also want to do is I'm going to go down to, go all the way down on the left, go to available data. Click on that. I'm more interested in looking at gene expression data. I truly feel, I've seen so many examples of people looking at, they'll look at two different tumors they both have the same mutational profile, but they behave very, very differently, right? In my mind, getting the genomics is kind of like seeing a picture of somebody and getting the expression data is like seeing a movie of that person. That, say I see a, a, somebody shows me a picture of this person, they've got neck, neck tattoos, mohawk, they look very, I might say, oh, that's a bad person, right? But then say I watch a movie of that person and they're helping orphans and saving puppies and you know, like, well, maybe that's really, that actually is a good person. This is kind of what I see is, you know, the genome is kind of a picture of, of just a solid picture. The M mRNA is the activity. That's the actual genome doing stuff. So in my mind, I love looking at transcriptome data. So let's go to in experimental strategy, click this five more. I want to hit RNA seq. Okay, and as you do that, you should now see 499 cases up there. Everybody with me? Wait, where was the RNA seq? Um, it's under experimental strategy under available data. Okay. All right, so now we have our, basically our data set. If I wanted to, I could filter this even more. I could say, I only wanna look at those individuals with skin cancer that are over 50 that had radiation treatment. That's possible, we could totally do that. But in this sense, I'm gonna keep this kind of simple just to kind of show you what's going on. So to get out of here, you can just click on this, this X over here, cohort builder, get out of there. So you can see, as long as you still see this 499 cases, this should be, this is relevant, you're, you're on the right track. Okay, so now what I wanna do, I wanna show you one thing, because people are gonna ask you this. They're gonna say, hey, uh, you're working on skin cancer, can you tell me what is the mutational uh, rate of this particular gene, or how many people having mutation, this specific mutation in, in the TCGA cohort. So go, as we go here, you'll see it over, where's mutation? Mutation frequency hit this play button. All right. So based on this database, what's the most mutated gene in this cancer? What's that? Yep, MUC16. And you can see here, 
if you have, if it's more mutated, you're, oh wait, if it's mutated, you have a better chance of survival actually. Holy crap. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But I want you to, I want you to think about MUC16 for a minute and, and mutation. Somebody look up, tell me how many amino acids are in the transcribed MUC16 gene. MUC16, number of amino acids. <laughs> yeah, what do you notice about that? What's the average? I'll just tell you. What, the average number of amino acids in your, your average protein is about 400 amino acids. And you said it was about 20,000? Yeah. What does that tell you about the gene? It's huge. It's monstrous. Right? Do you think that this gene is getting mutated because it's important? Like, what would this tell you? Think about mutations. Remember, these are all like DNA is a physical thing, right? If I've got a huge gene, the odds of it getting mutated, since I have a bigger target compared to a little gene, I'm gonna get more mutations, right? This is exactly what's happening. And so what I would tell you is, I would say MUC16 probably isn't important in your, in your study, it's just because it's huge and that's why it's getting mutated. What happens in a lot of these these cancers, especially ones that are involved in environmental stimuli like lung cancer and, and skin cancer, is that what happens is something happens to the RNA DNA repair and then therefore everything else, you get all these different mutations because they don't get repaired. So what you end up seeing is just kind of like all this shrapnel. So in certain instances, it's best you don't want to put so much reliance on the actual mutation pattern because it's just elevated is what this is probably telling you. And we can kind of see that here when you look at MUC16. So if I go down, I can actually look at this gene. I, let's see. So it's here. So it's doing the, the, the uh, uh, survival curve here. But if you look, this is basically, so MUC16, here are the number of affected cases in my cohort, which is 73%. If you look at all of them across all different cancers, it's 17.57%. So it's in a lot of other cancers as well. And then you can see that the amount of gain, the copy number variation gain versus loss is about the same pretty close. Well, maybe a little more loss. And then you can see there's 1,605 mutations associated with this gene, right? Look at these other ones. You know, they're in the hundreds. This is in the thousands. So that's kind of telling you it's a huge gene, you know, and we can actually look at these mutations. If I click on this mutation button here, uh, I click on this mutation button here, We get the overall plot, and this will tell you, and again, like I said, this has 181 pages of different mutations. But if your PI says, hey, I want you to go in and find this mutation and tell me this specific mutation, what its mutation rate is in the general population, this is how you do it. So if I went here, this particular mutation on chromosome 19, right? Does everybody understand? So here's the change in the nucleotides. You go from a G to an A at the very end. And then here, this is the type, this is the change it makes in the protein. Does everybody understand you have this P5119 and then S? Does everybody understand what that means? Anybody that doesn't? You'll see a lot of changes in, in, in basically mutations presented this way, is that at amino acid 519, or 5019, this proline gets changed to a serine. 
That's what that means. So if you see this annotation, this is the change that happens. And this is the exact nucleotide change. It's kind of the same thing based on this gene in the coding sequence. Um, so, so again, I could say here, and if, I, if they said, hey, what's the mutation rate on this in your particular cancer? I would say it's 2.2% for this particular mutation. And in this instance, it is the, the highest mutated mutation in this particular gene. Does everybody understand that? And I could actually go, and this will tell you the type of impact, whether you're getting a stop codon or is it changing it into a, going from, say, a positively charged amino acid to negatively or to uh, hydrophilic, hydrophobic. These are all important. Okay, so what we can do, we can, let's see, anything else I want to show here? Now let's close out of this. Okay, so again, a lot of these different things do diff, you can play around with it. I would say some of them aren't very useful, <laughs> but for your particular instance, they might be. So again, Everybody's bookmarked this, this page, right? Okay, so we'll come back to that. Here's what I think is really cool about this. Let's go to the gene expression clustering. So right in the middle, hit your play button. So what this did, remember, we only looked at genes or basically samples that had RNA-seq data, so transcriptome data. What this did is it took the over all the samples that we're looking at, which are about 500 cases, which are on the top, it's telling me what the top most 100 variable genes are doing. And then it clustered those as well. Right? Here is what I want you, remember we were talking about super friends and the Legion of Doom. Look at this area here, go down a little bit. Look at this, right? You have these, these genes here, which are all clustering together, right? A lot of them are up in these samples, kind of down, kind of variable, mostly down, and then they go up, and then they go really up in these samples. What do you think those genes are doing? working together, super friends, right? They're doing something. This, in my mind, this is the best way to find signaling networks, right? So what you can do is you can actually download this data up here. You can download the TSV data file and basically it'll give you a, a basically a Excel spreadsheet. You can turn that into an Excel spreadsheet and then basically collect all of these genes that are here. All right, so again, say, you know, to give you a kind of example of how you might use this, I have a particular gene. I wanna see its expression in say a particular cancer. You can actually put in your own gene list. If you play around with this, you can put that. You can see yourself basically get a heat map of this whole thing. And then what you can do is see, hey, I have my gene. What is it connected to? And this will help you determine how your gene is regulated and what it is regulating. Okay, you can click off of this. Again, there's lots of different things you can look in here. You can also, basically pull data from this, this, this website if you wanted to. But again, this is TCGA. So when somebody tells you, they say, I want this information, go to TCA and do this, this is the site where you go and do that. All right.